What's going on boys? We're going to go over analysis of a pro gameplay example just to show you the importance of the basics. Remember what I've always told you, pros have a very high level of basics. That's all they use, but then they use the Travellers and the Germans and the, and the Stepovers to give them the edge, okay? But their basics are a very high level. If you look at every single pro, there's not one top tier pro player that their bases are not in check. The difference is they know when to use teammate contain. They know when to turn away, when to make a pass. These are the small, this is why I try to teach you basic football because a lot of people put too much emphasis on, okay, do I need to do a step over here, Traveller here? It's honestly all about the basics. Um, now, you're going to see, for example, certain things in this gameplay. This is Tuga versus Gorilla, two fantastic top tier pro players, in my opinion. Um, this is that, that player lock thing that I don't even know how to even defend. You can't even defend it right now. But that is the mechanic abuse that they would use to get the advantage. But have a look at their gameplay normally. See when the ball's with Akimi, you see how a player here, like Gorilla, for example, or Tug, or whoever this is, right? You see how they don't force the ball. A lot of players here, when they get the ball in this region, they will think, oh, I need to go forward here, and they'll try to force this ball. You can make a pass here and do a one-two backwards, that is one option, but look how they rotate the ball. They go backwards, especially you can see here when Tug gets the ball, he rotates the ball. Then you can see he gets the ball here, takes a touch away into the safe area. And have a look here. This is the problem that a lot of basic um, basic mistakes that I would say comments that a lot of players make. You see how you would probably try to sprint into this direction. You see how here a pro player takes a touch away. This is why I say even if you watch my FIFA school series, it's all about the basics. It's knowing when to take a touch away and when to protect the ball. One thing they do very well though is they use combination plays. All about time you can see here with Gorilla how that chance is created. Now, to be honest, it was a very, very nice goal. You can see here with Mendy coming inside here, then Dembele having the ball, then Dembele coming on the inside, and then that player get, getting drifted away. And the reason why this happened, by the way, is you can see Hakimi here was brought all the way at this point just over here. Then Gorilla, that area was not covered. Gorilla overcommitted, and that's what opened up the space and for Ginola. Now these are the small things that they see with their eyes. This is what I think a lot of makes difference between an average player and a pro player as well, is understanding these small movements. A lot of them they practice the movements again and again and again. But the truth is it all comes down to experience. Some people have got an eye for this. This is why I say use the cop camera angle. You can see a gorilla's got the tele broadcast camera angle. The difference is gorilla is one of the best players in the world um, and has been historically. Of course, he's a 2017 champion. We all know that. In FIFA 17, he won the, the World Cup equivalent. Um, but he will look at the radar a lot. Um, because of his experience on playing the game and his intuition and his knowledge, he would roughly have a peripheral vision of where people are on the pitch depending on what formation he's playing. But he would also look at the radar a lot. So let's say, for example, let's say this pass to Mendy. A lot of players here, they will not see this pass to Mendy. You can see Mendy here on the radar is at the bottom of the screen. So let's just say Tuga, for example, may not see that pass to Mendy. But because of their experience, they know where their players are peripherally and they glance at the radar. That is why I'd recommend using a cop camera because you can see the most information, the most data on the pitch. You can see where players are, especially if you are bad at right stick switching. It helps you switch earlier, much, much earlier. One thing people ask me is in regards to his teammate contain. There's a reason why I don't teach teammate contain until you're at elite level. Because the truth is, is it very important? Yes, it is for pressing. It's probably one of the most important things. But the truth is, even players in elite division don't know how to use teammate contain. Now, why do, why do I say this? Because a lot of people in the elite division are not meant to be there. Because of no relegation, you have, to be completely candid, division three and division four players that eventually get to elite division. They think they're an elite division player when they're not. It doesn't really help the system, but this is why I always say, look, understand positioning first because teammate contains very risky. If you use it the wrong way, you can push someone out, especially this year, you can get caught in behind very, very easily. This is actually a really, really good way to actually get a goal, by the way. Um, it's down the line, trying to use the wing play. Got a bit fortunate there, but offside. You can see, for example, like here, watch when Hakimi gets the ball. Look, look at this, you can see a good example of got the ball back. You can see here was a mistake from Tuga. You can see Tuga here, took a touch away, but somehow the opponent just able to get it, just because he just grew, just was able to get aggressive. Maybe the 71 depth. Maybe, I can't believe this player actually got away with it, but they did. But we'll talk about that another day. Um, but you can see here, player lock. There's a flake, fake player lock to trick Tuga. Then use the player lock, fakes it again. Then use the player lock, brings the player away from the defensive line. Because naturally players go forward. When you use the player lock by pressing L3 and R3 inwards, you can select a player. Then you can make a pass upwards. And I think 
the um, I think when Gorilla made this pass, he probably expected the ball to go to R9. Sometimes the game will let the ball go dummy dummy through. So I think that's why he didn't go forward there. He never expected the ball to get to Graham there. So I would say, in my opinion, I think that's probably he just didn't realize. Because sometimes, sometimes that happens inside the game. That they get the game, the ball goes to the wrong player, the player that you don't intend to. But you can see an example of here, good teammate contain. You can see here on Gorilla screen, I'm um, probably using 71 depth here, but you can see teammate contain. You can apply pressure. But again, even when you use your left back, you see these pro players, they know, okay, let's say I've committed one player with teammate contain. They know, for example, how to defend with the other center back. They know if one player is committed, they know to be never to be too aggressive. You see how Gorilla never pushed forward here. A lot of players will be aggressive with one left back. And then I have one left back, uh, sorry, one, uh, one centre back here. You see how Gorilla understands the danger is there from his experience and, and doesn't push all the way. Unless there was a guaranteed chance to win the ball here, unless there was a tactical foul made, there's certain tackles that you can make that I like to make with 50 50s, where you either get the ball or you take the player out. Those are worth taking a risk. You can see here the same thing here. Look, watch this a 1 2 with Graham. Although the ball was lost, you can see, look here, a 1 2. Graham makes that run going forward. And that was a bit unlucky. Bit of maybe bad part. This is one thing with passing, which is another thing altogether. Um, some of those are 50-50. you got to be careful with those passes. If you're not sure in those situations, don't take a risk and go back to the goalkeeper. They can be very, very risky. But you can see here, look, one to a Neymar. You see a lot of pros, people say, look, why do pro players make these amazing runs? It didn't. All this play did is an L1 plus X. Two, uh, Grillo was able to do that. And Neymar makes the run in behind. You see that? Then Neymar's making that run. Then you can see Tuga's now timing it. And look, you see how that defender has now drifted away. This situation, oh, so look at this defender over here. See, because if Neymar was standing still, Neymar would be over there. And then this play would push up to R9. But because Gorilla here did a 1-2 with Neymar, he's thinking, okay, I can pass the ball to Neymar. But also that means that the player's AI has to track Neymar. You see that? So now Tuga has to make a decision. Does he then go ahead and man mark Neymar or does he go and go towards Ronaldo? But you see, this is the, the most important things about L1. Just what I say to everyone, L1 triggers you need. To, this is why I recommend long ball so much because the average player, let's say you're watching this, the chances are you don't do anywhere near enough L1 triggers as a top tier player. So they're always pressing the L1 button. They're even using supplementary R1 button. The R1 button, I say be very careful with because the R1 button, to truth be told, it, it does take skill to use because don't forget just like in real life if you bring a player towards you the AI will track that player and you actually invite more pressure if you're getting pressed the best way to beat pressure just like you would in real life is to push a player away by bringing someone closer to you you're just going to invite the press even more so that's what one thing I just wanted to mention to you so be careful when you use the R1 button you can use it to kind of bring your player short as I mentioned in a video yesterday to kind of break through but, but that's the only way. Have a look at this one over here. You can see as well when, when uh, Gorilla gets the ball, patient. Ends up doing here, not the, not the German German cross per se. But have a look at how this, is, this whole attack is orchestrated. You can see, again, this is very risky though. But you can see what's happened here is he gets the ball with Mendy. Does a 1-2 backwards, right? Then you can see on the radar, you can see Gorilla, you can see his eyes just behind my camera. You can see his eyes are glancing down at the radar. He's now waiting for Mendy here to run just at the point before he's offside. Do you see here? This is the key because by the time you, you press the, the shoot, the pass button, you can see he's loaded up in the bottom left corner. By the time you load it up, Mendy will move from, from here to let's say realistically here directly on side so what gorilla is doing is waiting for mendy to make that run and then he's timed it to perfection you can see here the pass lob pass gets in behind and a bit of an unlucky chance here he went for the near post shot presumably because he assumed that tuga would have moved the goalkeeper but that could have been a very easy goal again these are the small few this is why i say look a lot of people i have to be careful what i say because um i got to be very careful about what i say here because you know how the community is but a lot of people they abuse mechanics um, average players and they never improve in a game it's because they're based are bad yes you can get the ball outside the box and do a Travella shot and score anyone can score Travella outside the box it's not that easy it's not that difficult to do that but knowing when to defend when to play a switch these are the things you won't get away with and that's why I say just be very very careful when you are that's why I say always work on the basics know when to take a touch away when to make that pass you can see would I have made that pass probably not I wouldn't recommend this either maybe Gorilla knew that nine times out of ten 
that pass going to go in that direction. And maybe he didn't see Hula in that situation. I don't actually know what's going on through his head. Maybe. But maybe that. But though, with those situations, to avoid losing the ball in those situations, don't take the risk. The reason why these top tier players can take the risk though, and you might even see when I play as well, sometimes I'm extremely aggressive with my centre backs. But you see, when they lose the ball, the biggest key difference is they know how to recover. So even if someone like Gorilla loses the ball in midfield, you see he doesn't panic. Of course, he puts yourself in a big situation where you'd probably concede here, but you see he doesn't panic. He goes ahead and he marks the passing lane, stopping the ball going from Ginola and trying to stop the ball from going to the main danger area to striker. You see that? Closing the gap out and then inviting the line, pushing the line forward using teammate contain. Then you can see here, you seeing the, seeing the, the player lock, See, use a teammate contain, pushing the player forward and able to close out the gap. So it's all about time. You can see Graham here doing a one-two. See, look, immediately Graham's done that one-two. Now you can write the player lock. If he can't go forward, he can now switch, switch the ball, go back to the goalkeeper. You see, he goes back to the goal. I've not seen this, by the way. He goes back to the goalkeeper. Now, again, here, on the radar here, you can see on this side, this is the most obvious thing. If you are struggling with these top tier players, they're very good at lesser driven. This is why it's very hard to learn from a pro player because... They dribble from outside, inside their box, um, and is this is why I try to make my, this is why I try to make my gameplay even more basic nowadays because I realised from coaching for years that when an average player sees someone like dribble inside their own box, they try to replicate it, and that's why they end up conceding the ball. And they're saying, why does it work for one player and it doesn't work for another? That's why if you've seen my gameplay over time, I used to use drag backs. I used to I used to do a lot of other things, a lot of other skill moves, but that is why I just use basic left stick. Basic L1 triggers, and I try to keep my game play as basic as possible um, because there's no one else that really does that on YouTube. No, everyone else teaches you advanced level, but the truth is, it's kind of like learning to drive a car. You know, you have to, you can't just go straight into a Formula One car. You've got to learn the basics of a car. How does a car work? How do you accelerate forward? How do you brake? And that's why I think it's very, very important you learn those basics, then you improve it on. But this is an example you can see here when Tua gets the ball. You can see, look, another thing people do, they do is they go route one inside the box. You can see when Tua gets the ball over there, if he can't go forward, look, he's just waiting, patiently waiting. You see that? He's not he's not getting the ball down the wing and saying, oh, you know what? There's no one to go to. Tuga is an exceptionally good player, especially with the 4-4-2. Historically speaking, he's been very, very good at pressing with and without the ball. And also his patient play down the wing is actually very good. It's finding the space. You can see he doesn't force the ball here and say, oh, you don't let me make the play. He keeps the ball safe. He waits. Let's Gorilla go back, plays for time, rotates the ball to the outside, see, and then tries to make the, work, the way inwards. See, this is the thing. A lot of people they think, oh, we can get the ball and go straight route one counterattack. Yes, for example, like here, this might be viable. If but there's no one available, look at these players go back. You can see Maynard's an L1 trigger. You can see now Gorilla can't take a risk here. Because if he loses the ball, Mendy's already gone forward. So you can see there's a very high level um, fake shot here. Oh, shot cancel to get away from that. A very, very high level that was. That was absolutely amazing. But you can see when he gets the ball with Varan again, same thing. Using the ball Graham as an L1 trigger. Then you can see here, goes into the middle, plays it safe, switches the ball. Then uses the player lock in, player lock fake. The good thing with Gorilla, how he does it, he used the player lock a lot to fake. So he would make the opponent think, is my play, is that player going to do a player lock in that situation? And then what Gorilla does is he cancels the player lock straight after. So you might, so sometimes if you see my player lock videos, you might see me cancel it as well. On the high level, it's a bit different. On the lower level, it won't make that much of a difference. Because let's say you do a player lock. I'm just going to uh, rewind it back, for example, just over. Let's see if I can get a good example. Um. Just for example, over here, on a high level, for example, someone will have to mark this. Maybe not Bellingham, right? But let's say this is good to get a player to come close. But to be honest, on a higher level, a lot of the top tier players will mark that, especially inside the box. If you were someone in Division 5, Division 6, they wouldn't think anything of it, really. But on the higher end, they mark every single option. So those fakes are used to bait and deceive opponents. So, for example, you might, protect, you might get the ball over here on a wing. And you might use a player lock, for example, to an attacker and then cancel it, then run down the byline and then make a pass to someone else inside the box. It's all about, it's kind of like a game of chess. It's about moving players out of position. How can you deceive someone? It's all about being unpredictable. How can you deceive and bait your opponent and use deception to get past as a strategy? You can see, for example, like here, you see the defensive line. Always in shape. If the player is going to press, you can see the supplementary players there as backup. And the mistake is made, you can see here, with the left back, you're holding the position, waiting for Maynard to come through, waiting for the back line to reunite. You can see here, 1-2 with Ronaldo. Basic, 1-2. You're always there. You can see Mendy's made a trigger on a run. 
Mendy's forward. Mendy's got the option. Mendy now has the ball. You, you see that player lock fake there? So what happens here at this situation over here? Two guys to think about. Can potentially R9 make the pass? It might be enough just to drift Tuga's eyes away from the situation so Mendy can keep running down the wing. But these are the small intricacies that a lot of players will take, especially on a higher end, to make the win. You can see there, there's a nice pass there for, for Neymar. Doesn't really transpire, doesn't really take it. Probably didn't see it, maybe have a ton of vision. Don't forget, it's a bit easier for us to look at the gameplay back, especially when you watch it. If you analyze your own gameplay, it's easier to watch your own gameplay back because you're not playing the game. When you're playing the game, you're tunnel visioning on one thing and you're not seeing what's happening on the other side of the pitch. This is why when you watch your gameplay back, you'll be like, oh, how did I not see that player? That's why I said to use the crop camera angle. When it's being more zoomed out, whether you think you notice it or not, your eyes peripherally will roughly see where that player is and your brain will acknowledge it. That's why I say use the crop camera angle. It will actually really help you. Even if you think it's not helping you, your brain is eventually tuning to making a map. And that's how you learn over time. Um, and then once you, you know, people always say, how do you glance at the radar when you're playing? Well, it's all about left stick. When you know where to take a touch away, you can glance at the radar. So for example, like here, when Tuga takes his touch, for example, here, when Tuga takes his touch here to the left-hand side, he knows he secured the ball. During that fraction of a second, he will then glance at the radar and be like, okay, what options do I have? I know I've got that play free in the middle. And within that one second, he makes a decision that, okay, I can go into the middle or I can go on the side. And you can see, look, I didn't even... I didn't even see this gameplay before, but you can see he made that pass. I just assumed that's what that player would do. So those are the split seconds people make those decisions is that they take a touch away. They know with the left analog stick, okay, my touch is taken away. I know my opponent can't get the ball. They glance at the radar, see the player, and then they make the movement again. That's what gives them that split second. People always ask me that, oh, when do players, top two players make the advantage? That's the way they do it. So if you ever got the cop camera angle, that is the way you can do it. Again, patience here with Tuga gets the ball, rotates it, waits, 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 makes that pass and then goes with a shot. And it's a it's pretty good shot, to be honest, from this region. I'm surprised it actually went in. Um, you can see, try to close out the angle with Mbappe. So with Mbappe, with Virgil van Dijk. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd just give you just a quick um, half analysis. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, but just kind of on how the thought process and how some of these players, um, they go through it. Um, but have a look at some of these gameplays. It's really, really interesting to see, for example, what they do. One tip I'll give you is always when you see these, when you watch these gameplays back, right? Let's say, for example, over here, I'm trying to find a good example. Uh, I'm just going to skip here a little bit, for example, for an attacking scenario. So when you get the ball, for example, here, pause the game and have a look at what's going on. Watch it back and ask yourself, what would I do in this situation? So you might try to map out what you're going to do. So you might be like, oh, I'm going to wait for this player to make a run. I'll take a touch this way and then do an L1 triangle. Then press play and then see what, the, see what that player does. Now, if, you do, if you're doing the right thing or similar things to what the, what the pro players are doing, most of the time your decision making is correct. But if you're, if you're not making the pass, but they're completing the pass, it's the timing of that action. That's just a quick tip if you want to improve. So make sure you do watch their gameplay and always think, what would I do in that situation? Always assume. So always try to assume what you would do, but assume you're wrong. And that way you can learn from these examples. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. A uh, bit of a first half, bit of a talk along as well. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. If you want to see more videos like these, check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash no guides. Well, of course, we do for analysis. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.